story time. In January of 2010 a good friend of mine, Robin V., of Monroe Falls Paranormal Society contacted me about a rash of sightings of a werewolf-type creature running out of a metro park crossing traffic. Upon talking to witnesses, all of them described it as a werewolf or dog man. I went to the offices of the Metro Park District to ask about the sightings of the dog man that have been reported in their parks. Their comment to me was we don't like to talk about it. They are aware that there is something in the park, they're just not sure what it is exactly. I left contact info in case of more sightings. About a week and a half later I received a call from a friend about a sighting from one of the park rangers. I met up with him the next morning he stated that he was getting back into his vehicle and looked off to the left and seen what appeared to be a dog on all fours, he got into his vehicle backed up and when the headlights shined on the dog it stood up and looked at him for a brief moment and walked away on just two feet. The ranger took me to the site where he saw the creature standing, there were fresh tracks in the snow. I counted 168 tracks coming out of the deep woods to where the creature was standing and tracks from where it was standing to out of the park across the road. This is still an ongoing investigation. I was out super late one night probably about 1994 being a typical badass kid. I had snuck out the window and it was about 4 am and I had to hurry up and get home before people woke up for work at my house so I decided to cut through the woods. It was quicker and probably safer than walking on the highway. I was 12-ish and half drunk cause otherwise I never would have walked in the woods by myself at night. Now I am a girl, at that time probably 110 pounds and looked at least 17. I have a daughter that looks just like me that gives me nightmares. Anyways, I started walking and I honestly couldn't see anything. Like barely my hand in front of my face but I had walked this path many times and it was well worn. I was almost to the other side when someone about 3 feet from my face was holding a beeper and lit it up like they were checking it. That's all I saw no hand or body, just a floating lit up beeper. I took TF off and never did that dumb shit again. Well I never walked through the woods. I totally snuck out my window again. People either don't believe me or they don't understand how terrifying it was. Kids are dumb. I used to work in a shitty little mall in the suburbs of a city known for crackheads and shootings. A K in most cities, I was about 16 at the time and when we closed the store, we had to leave through a back alley as the male mall had long since been locked up. We always left in pairs, but a few particular nights I wasn't able to catch a buddy. Mind you, I would always park under the streetlights so I could be seen on cameras, and always called my mom as I was walking to my car. A little life tip I stole from the movie taken in case anything were to happen. On several occasions creepy shit would go down. Had someone wrap a shirt on my windshield wiper, in attempt to get me back out of my car, nope had a stalker type, who would come in and follow me or the other girls around the store their whole shift and even buy them coffees, wait for me outside the alley exit. Had some dudes walking through the parking lot start walking toward me and my car so I booked it and sped the heck out of there. Had someone literally slashed two of my tires from the inside. I was 16 years old. I think had I not been raised to be hyper aware, I would have easily been a victim to any of these targets. It was a crisp autumn evening in Lodi, a small town nestled away in the heart of Ohio. I had just returned from work, exhausted but content, and my teenage daughter, Liz, was engrossed in her homework at the kitchen table. The house was filled with the soft hum of our daily routine when suddenly, a high-pitched scream pierced through the tranquility of our home. Both Liz and I looked at each other, wide-eyed, as the eerie sound resonated through the stillness. It was a noise unlike anything we had ever heard before, a peculiar mix of a woman's scream and the haunting call of a peacock. We exchanged puzzled glances before rushing to the window. In mere seconds, we heard it again. This time, 
The sound was accompanied by a thunderous commotion, like the scraping of heavy metal. Our hearts raced as we tried to locate the source of the disturbance. It sounded as if something immense was moving with incredible force. I hurried to the backyard, Liz close behind, and our jaws dropped in disbelief. There, on the side of our house, was an air conditioner unit. But it wasn't just sitting there, it was being pushed, no, practically shoved, by some unseen force. The sheer power on display was terrifying. As we watched, our shock deepened. Suddenly, a massive shape jumped onto the unit. It was a creature of the most unusual and terrifying appearance. It had long, shaggy hair that trailed behind it like a tail, and its legs, though short in comparison to its body, were long enough to stretch to an astonishing seven feet. The beast weighed what seemed like an impossible 400 pounds. It was like a nightmarish amalgamation of a polar bear, a gorilla, a wolf, and a man, all rolled into one surreal entity. Our voices caught in our throats as we stared at this monstrous creature, its form swaying back and forth atop the air conditioner. It seemed to be taunting us with its presence, with its utter otherworldliness. Then, in an instant, it leapt off the unit, disappearing into the darkness. Seconds later, we heard a sound in the distance, as if the creature had put a mile between itself and us. The strange scream, now a faint echo, sent shivers down our spines. Our minds raced as we struggled to make sense of what we had just witnessed. It was too bizarre, too nightmarish to be real. But the sight and sound of it were undeniable. Terrified and bewildered, we knew we had to report this to the Lodi police. We weren't alone in our encounter with the inexplicable beast. As we would soon find out, others in town had witnessed similar sightings. In fact, Reports of this mysterious creature dated back more than 15 years. The police listened to our account with a mixture of concern and skepticism. They assured us they would look into the matter but warned us not to jump to conclusions. Nevertheless, we couldn't shake the eerie feeling that had settled over Lodi. Years passed, and it seemed that the beast had vanished into the annals of the unknown. Life in our quiet town returned to normal but the memory of that fateful night continued to haunt us. Then, in 2008, a chilling deja vu descended upon us. Liz had a boyfriend by then, and we were driving back from Mansfield along Route 42 when it happened again. The creature, the same enigmatic entity we had seen years before, appeared on the roadside. Liz, her boyfriend, and I watched in stunned silence as it crossed our path. This time, we knew there was no denying it. The beast of Lodi was real, and its presence remained as inexplicable and unsettling as ever. To this day, the enigma endures. The creature, whatever it may be, continues to elude explanation, leaving the residents of Lodi to wonder about the mysteries that lie hidden in the shadows of their quiet town. An ex and I went glamping in Santa Barbara a few years back and had planned to watch the meteor shower up a mountain, above the trees with unobstructed views. So we took some wine and blankets to my car around midnight and drove up this super long trail before we planned to get out and hike up. As we reached the top where we were to leave the car something just felt strange, nevertheless we hiked up and found a spot but after not long I could hear something in the distance and we were sitting in darkness. I didn't like it. So I suggested we go back to the car and find a spot along the driveway that has a good view. We get back to the car and lay the blankets on the hood and lie on the top of the car a la Wayne's World watching the airplanes. And suddenly I hear a noise again. No less than 15 feet in front of us are cat eyes, that little reflective twinkle. I slipped through the open car window and turned on my headlights and there was a mountain lion standing right there in front of us. My ex gets back into the car too, we pull the blankets inside and watch the lion walk off to the side of the road. I drive maybe 200 feet further down the trail and suggest we watch through the sunroof or windshield and as we are the mountain lion turns up once again. We decide to leave back to the base and to our cabin. Strangely the parking spot I had my car in under a tree for morning shade was now taken and so I parked elsewhere. 
In the morning the rangers had put up mountain lion present warnings and a massive branch from the tree that my car was initially under had broken off in the middle of the night and smashed straight through the other car's windshield. Just a weird night. I was once a Navy SEAL, part of an elite team that faced danger head-on in some of the world's most treacherous places. Throughout my career, I encountered my fair share of perilous situations. So, our mission had taken us to the heart of war-torn Iraq, deep into enemy territory. We were tasked with infiltrating an underground bunker, a mission shrouded in secrecy and danger. The atmosphere was tense as we descended into the depths of the earth, our training and camaraderie are only sources of comfort. As we navigated the labyrinthine corridors of the bunker, we had an unsettling feeling that we were not alone. It was as though an unseen presence lingered in the shadows, watching our every move. Our senses were heightened, and our instincts screamed danger. Then, it happened. As we rounded a dimly lit corner, we came face to face with the inexplicable. Before us stood a humanoid figure, its form wavering as if it were composed of shifting shadows. It was roughly our height, with a slender, almost ethereal build. But what truly set it apart was its ability to become invisible at will. The creature's skin, if it could be called that, was a dark, otherworldly hue that seemed to absorb the very light around it. It had no discernible facial features, no eyes, nose, or mouth, just a featureless visage that filled us with dread. As the creature locked its invisible gaze upon us, panic rippled through our team. In the chaos that followed, we opened fire, bullets piercing the air where we believed our foe to be. But the creature was elusive, darting in and out of sight, leaving us bewildered and disoriented. The battle that ensued was like nothing I had ever experienced. We fired blindly into the darkness, struggling to track the invisible enemy that moved with uncanny agility. It was as though we were fighting a ghost, a malevolent force that defied explanation. Minutes felt like hours as we engaged in this eerie standoff. Then, as quickly as it had appeared, the creature vanished. Our bullets struck nothing but air, and the oppressive sense of malevolence began to dissipate. We searched every inch of that bunker, our hearts heavy with the weight of what we had encountered, but there was no trace of the mysterious entity. It had simply vanished into thin air, leaving behind only a sense of unease that lingered in the corners of our minds. As we emerged from the underground darkness and reunited with our captain, we knew we had to share our harrowing tale. We recounted the events to him, each word weighed down by the gravity of our experience. But the captain's response was unexpected and chilling. He instructed us to remain silent, to tell no one about what we had witnessed. His voice carried a weight of authority and fear that left us with no choice but to comply. My friends and I were very into spooky adventures. It was a hobby that originated in our high school years. We started playing with an Ouija board at some cemetery at night, and like addicts looking for a bigger high, we moved on to exploring abandoned buildings that were supposedly haunted. With the exception of a very unsettling atmosphere at most places, we were never in any real danger. That is until our last adventure. It had been some time since we had the chance to go on any adventure. Once we graduated from high school, some of us moved away for college, others started families, and others simply fell off the face of the earth. A while back, I was contacted by my best friend in high school, and after catching up, he proposed a trip to a national park. Usually, this sort of trip would actually be a nice outdoor experience with friends, but Mike had specifically picked the national park for a reason, the disproportionate number of people that go missing there a year. This tidbit of information immediately made me pause. We were all in a way adrenaline junkies, always looking for that next scare. The difference this time was that we weren't going to explore an abandoned building or play in a graveyard. We were going to visit a place where real people go missing and are never heard from again. Mike, being the silver-tongued devil as always, 
managed to convince me that we would be safe camping at the park and that a handful of our group had vast experience in the outdoors. Even though I should have made the sane decision of hanging up the phone and going back to my daily mundane life, I was out on the road two days later and was meeting up with my friends at the park visitors center. The first thing I noticed was the immense beauty of the park. We had not even begun to explore the area, and it was already one of the most breathtaking places I'd ever laid eyes on. The second thing I noticed was the bulletin board next to the parking lot. It was overflowing with missing person posters. While we had begun to unload all our camping equipment, a park ranger came out of the visitor center's office. He looked tired, like he had not gotten a minute of sleep in the past week but was trying hard to fake a friendly demeanor. Hello everyone, what brings you to our park? He said in a tired voice. Mike engaged him in conversation. We're just here for a camping weekend, sir. The park ranger looked saddened at the words coming out of Mike's mouth. Yeah, it looks that way. Listen, you folk don't look like the misinformed kind, and I know you've seen our bulletin boards. People have a tendency to go missing in this park, and we are very short on staff, being I'm the only one on shift. If you insist on camping in this area, don't go too deep into the woods and stay on the paths. If you get lost out here, well, we don't have a good track record of finding nice folk like you. The park ranger didn't really stick around waiting for our reply. He went about his day, and we just went about ours. Our group, composed of six people, three men and three women, walked for a few miles looking for a good camping spot within the woods. I was initially against being so far away from our vehicles until Mike and one of his friends, Alex pulled out hunting rifles from their bags. If there was anything dangerous in these woods, we would be surely safe, I thought. After a long walk, we found a spot that was perfect for our campsite, and we began setting our tents up. By nightfall, we had multiple tents around a campfire, and we began drinking a few beers and reminiscing about our old high school adventures. Around midnight, Mike had a terrible idea that he had joyfully proposed to the rest of us. We should try and find some of those missing people out here. Some of them would just be bones by now. Nobody was drunk enough to go exploring the dark woods in search of ghosts with the exception of Mike and his friend Alex. When the rest of our group inevitably rejected his proposal, he took his hunting rifle, his friend and Brenda, the woman he was dating and drunkenly set off for a scary adventure in the woods. As they left and we could no longer hear their steps in the woods, I remember the park ranger's warning, stay on the paths, which they most definitely did not do. My worries were validated hours later when they had not returned to the campsite. We tried reaching them on their phones, but we had no service this deep into the woods. After some debate, we decided to head back to the visitor's center and get help from the park ranger. Regardless of his previous warnings, we would have a better chance at finding our friends with his help and not go blindly searching in the woods and inevitably get lost as well. We only took what was necessary with us, some flashlights, and the other hunting rifle Alex left at the camp. About 30 minutes into walking back to the visitor's center, we noticed something unsettling. All the wildlife around us seemed to go dead quiet. It seemed like our footsteps echoed throughout the woods for miles. From my very limited experience in nature, I could remember that when the woods went quiet, a predator was nearby. Just when I was about to consider the sinister thought, a scream broke the silence. Help! It sounded like Mike was crying out somewhere not too far from us. Help me! We started to follow the screams for help, which led us further and further away from the path. A few dozen feet deeper into the woods, we found a flickering flashlight that had been cracked and barely functioning. A few feet in front of us, we could hear Mike, help me. Mike sounded weaker this time, but something was off. His voice sounded wrong this time, like someone was trying to imitate how a human spoke and Mike's voice at the same time. Mike, are you hurt, buddy? I said concerned but not moving an inch forward until I got a reply. Yes. Call me. ELP, Mike said maybe 20 feet in front of us. He looked like he was on his knees. Where are Alex and Brenda? 
I asked while signaling Josh to ready the rifle he was carrying. T-H-A re. He re. We. Fallant. T-H-M. I pointed my flashlight towards Mike. His body was on his knees, his head was slumped forward, and his shirt was covered in dirt and bathed in blood. I no knew that whatever was talking to us only a few feet in front of us was not Mike. He had been dead for hours. They were so damn tasty. The voice stopped trying to imitate Mike. Mike's head raised up to where we could see his lifeless eyes rolled to the back of his head, and somehow, his dislocated jaw was moving by itself, like some sort of demonic ventriloquist and dummy show. Something large and grotesque emerged from behind Mike's corpse. It had one of its inhuman hands lodged into the back of Mike's skull using him as a puppet. It wasted no time to drop on all fours and rush towards us. Josh fired a shot at it and missed. Before our reflexes could kick in, it had crashed into us, throwing Amber and I in different directions, but making sure it got Josh first as he was the biggest threat with a weapon. I landed a few feet from Amber, who had landed badly and broken her leg. I got her up, and we shuffled as fast as Amber could go while the creature ripped chunks off Joshua we made it maybe 50 meters before we were knocked to the ground, and Amber was pulled away into the dark woods, screaming all the way. I got to my feet again and sprinted faster and further than I had ever gone before. I stopped hearing Amber's wails of pain and knew that thing would catch up to me in a matter of moments no matter how fast the surge of adrenaline would make me run. I fell in the darkness, longer than I should. There must have been some sort of cliff I failed to see. I landed on something hard and soft at the same time, I couldn't see a thing after I dropped my flashlight, I could only smell the terrible putrid stench of death all around me. I could hear dozens of flies buzzing around me, and it made me froze in terror. As my vision focused in the darkness, I could see the hundreds of bodies around me, I had fallen into a mass grave. None of the corpses were complete from what I could tell, and some of them I recognized. Amber and Alex were among the piles of dead and one particular body I could recognize as the park ranger that we had met in the morning. I had to swallow my scream as a couple more bodies were thrown into the pile. The creature was actively looking through the pile for any signs of me. I had to play dead until the creature left in defeat. I waited what felt like an eternity until the first rays of light broke through the trees. I felt sick to my stomach as I tried crawling over the dead bodies and out of the pit. I cried for my friends and cried some more when my foot got stuck in one of the bodies. It was Mike, and my foot had gone through where his stomach used to be. Eventually, I crawled out of the mass grave and found my way back to the path we originally used to get to our campsite. A few hours of walking, and I reached the visitor's center where our vehicles awaited our return. I got into my car and fell into a catatonic state for a few minutes. After I snapped out of it, I drove away as the feeling of still being watched was too overwhelming, as I did I saw a car driving towards the visitor's center. A man, a woman, and two young children in the back seat. I wish I could say that I stopped and warned them of the impending doom that awaited them. But I drove, I didn't look back. About two weeks ago me and my two friends were bored around 2 am and decided to go walk to the park in my neighborhood. It's a pretty small park with one playground but it has a gully that leads to a walking path near a stream that leads all the way up the canyons and the mountains, I live in northern Utah. I've been to this park a lot since I was little and I've already had a couple experiences in the past there that seemed not human. We got to the park and it was completely dark the lights that usually turn on at night at the park were off or maybe it was just late enough that they turned off but still it was like pitch black. We entered the side of the park where the playground is and kinda just walked around for a minute and sat on the swings then my friends convinced me to walk into the gully with them. I was already terrified to walk in that gully in the daylight, so we're walking down the path and we're having to use our phone flashlights like in a legit horror movie since we cannot see almost anything in front of us. 
My friends were laughing mostly and felt fine but I already was really anxious and so we kept walking around and they kept trying to convince me it was fine but I was genuinely really scared and felt like I was being watched up until we got out of the gully. My boyfriend didn't want to scare me at the time but he said that he also felt like he was being watched in the gully and had goosebumps. When we got out of the gully we went back to the playground just to sit down and relax for a moment. When we sat down we began to talk about how we felt a bit uneasy down in the gully and just talking about the normal things we talk about. All of the sudden, out of the corner of my eye about 20 feet away I see something that seems about the size of like a large cat or goose, I don't know? Lol, and it is slowly walking at a diagonal angle kinda towards us but with really pronounced and long steps kind of like something hunting its prey but it seemed like it only had two legs. So I pointed it out to my friends and turned on my phone flashlight in the area it was and literally a pair of orange eyes, like when animal gets a light flashed in their eyes, was staring right at us so I got up and we all kinda freaked out and ran, Lamau. So we ran to the end of the parking lot before my boyfriend went closer again with his flashlight on and said he saw something crawling on all fours towards us so we booked it home but felt like we were being watched the whole time. I know it could have been an animal but I have absolutely no idea what it was. It looked white and at first seemed to have two legs and was walking slowly and pronounced. Then my boyfriend said it was crawling on all fours towards him after we ran the first time. Any thoughts? It was 1978 about 20 miles west of Denver in Golden, Colorado. This was right before my family moved to Montana. I and a buddy of mine were 16 years old at the time. What we did was we kind of snuck out of the house at night, you know. This was on Lookout Mountain Road. We come out around the corner and there's a recreation area on the right side. They have company picnics in there, a baseball diamond, picnic tables, etc. There was this tall creature standing near the pitcher's mound beating a large dog with a stick. This thing was at least 8 feet tall and it wasn't human, I could tell that right away. Yeah, it was a Bigfoot. The dog was either unconscious or dead. Right across the street is the nature center and there's a big stone gate and there is a very strong Chinook wind blowing. We get behind the gate and we're watching this scene. It's got the dog by the tail and it's beating this dog on the head. It had the dog in its left hand and the stick in the right. Holding it out, you know. I turned to my friend and I whispered. I forget what I whispered. I think I said, can you believe this? This thing turned its head towards us like it heard me whisper. We had to be at least a hundred yards away from it. Maybe the heavy wind allowed my voice to carry. We were downwind from it. It suddenly took off running and must have covered 200 yards in 5 seconds or so. After several minutes, we walked over to the dog. By that time, the poor thing was mangled and dead. About an hour later, after retrieving a shovel, we buried the dog in the woods. There was no collar or identification on it. I have no idea why Bigfoot was beating the dog. After all these years, my friend and I still talk about the incident. I've been looking for a place to share this story. I was on a road trip about July 2014 driving through Ohio when my friend and I diverted from the route to relax at Hocking Hill State Park or Old Man's Cave near Logan, Ohio. What I encountered there has stuck with me and disturbed me for years. Although I can kind of joke about it, I am certain what I saw wasn't human. While in the public shower, in the same stall my friend had just showered in without incident, I caught something from the corner of my eye. When I looked down there was a disturbing creature, very ugly and small, craning its neck beneath the stall in a very unnatural way to glimpse at me shower. This creature was almost frog-like or troll-like in the face with oddly placed patches of hair on its cheeks where normally a man's beard wouldn't grow. The way it slid its head under and looked up at me was bizarre and demonic. When I looked down at it I could see satisfaction or delight in this being's expression that I was frightened. In an instant I turned off the shower and put my clothes on while I was soaking wet. 
In my head thinking about what it was I saw and if I should confront it in the stall over I hear the shower creak on. This was almost like a clever way to dissuade me from confronting it, almost trickster-like. I ran out of the shower house and immediately told my friend to drive away because I had encountered a leprechaun or troll in the bathroom. Has anyone has similar instances in the area? The way the creature moved and could crane its neck was not human. Heck if it were just a crackhead or weird guy peeping under the stall I wouldn't have been nearly as disturbed it was true fear in my gut and I hope someone has had a similar experience in the area I can talk to. This report holds several critical eyewitness accounts of the events at O'Hare International Airport on October 4th in 1941. The following is an excerpt from a UAP report regarding this incident. The first military officer sighting. The first incident occurred at about 3.15 am. Two lieutenants observed a red light moving above the airport's northwest corner. As they watched, it descended below the level of the airport and disappeared from their view. Although this is a very credible sighting, there remains some doubt as to whether or not this was a UAP or something else entirely. The second military officer sighting, a little bit before 4 a.m., two other officers stationed at the field observed an object that looked like an automobile headlight traveling across the northwest section of the O'Hare Airport at approximately 2,000 feet or 610 meters. The air traffic control tower reported seeing nothing on radar corresponding with the sighting. The description provided by the officers corresponds with that of a star or a planet. This sighting is far more credible than that of the first military officer, as it was visible on radar and was seen by multiple eyewitnesses. The third military officer sighting, at roughly 4.25 am, several enlisted men stationed at the airport reported seeing what they described as an unidentified object pass overhead traveling east to west at a very high velocity. This unknown object was also visible on radar and has recently been analyzed using recently declassified information from World War II archives. This sighting is definitely identified as a vehicle in low Earth orbit through its appearance moving across the sky and behavior on radar tracking systems. Thus, eliminating possible explanations such as a plane. As the object passed to the west, one of the witnesses reported hearing a screaming noise. This also was confirmed by several other witnesses who, too, saw it. Although it is unknown when exactly these onlookers heard this, it could be explained as radio static caused by increased radiation from the testing of radar systems on a vehicle in low Earth orbit. There were no reports of any sound accompanying this mysterious vehicle as it traveled across the sky toward the horizon and out of sight. In summation, it is likely that there was some sort of atmospheric phenomenon which accounts for some aspects of these sightings but not others. A declassified report shows that at this time, there were atomic tests being done above ground, some near Las Vegas, Nevada, some 400 miles or 640 kilometers away. This could, in addition to the LED sighting, account for some of the atmospheric phenomenon reported by eyewitnesses. It is unlikely that this UFO incident was caused by atomic activity or extraterrestrial intervention, though it currently remains unexplained how weather patterns could have affected witnesses on the ground at O'Hare Airport. Five years ago, I was driving to work bright and early in the morning and the SUV next to me was in a right turn only lane and I was in the straight lane while we were waiting for the light to change. I didn't think much of it or look at the SUV or driver until the light changed and they also tried going straight. At that point I looked over as they were basically trying to run me off the road to go straight and veering into me. I was going to honk but then the middle-aged lady that was driving, jerked head to the side, looked right at me and her whole face morphed into a terrifying face. I don't even know how to describe it. It elongated and looked awful and terrifying. Like that scream painting by Edward Munch. But way more terrifying. It's like she decided to show me what she really is and it changed in a flash. I slammed on my brakes, she, 
or it cut in front of me and I ended up taking the very next right turn just to get away from her and parked on the side of the road to catch my breath. I don't do drugs. I sometimes have a couple of beers after work, but nothing crazy. I've never seen anything like this before or after and I've been too scared to mention it to anyone but my husband for the fear of being called a crazy person. I saw her face change right before my eyes and am to this day absolutely certain of what I saw. The feeling that came over me was just absolute terror and the look she gave me was certainly menacing. Has anyone else ever experienced anything like that? I was riding the L, in Chicago, going to a rock and roll concert on the train, and sitting two or three seats off from the door. In walks this large African American gentleman. I worked in healthcare for 22 years and I know that man, as long I've been alive, he's been dead. I looked up at him, his hair is kind of matted. My blood just ran cold. I looked up and his ears were sewn shut. His eyelids were sewn shut his nose, his mouth, everything was sewn shut. And I'm sitting there just looking at him and I'm freaking out inside and I'm thinking, God, please, let him not be for me. He rode for about two or three stops and then got off. And I'm just terrified out of my mind. So I got to the show, see some of my friends, talk a little bit and they are like, man, I don't even know what that is. I'm like, it's the walking dead. Ghosts I get, but the walking dead, that's not right. That's not natural. Oh my god. There was no way you could not see it. I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it. I was thinking, glove to glove, God, Gabriel, all the angels, please watch over me right now. He walked right off the thing. So I went through and I looked it up and there is actually a popular zombie. It was the juju and it was probably sent by some black practitioner out to go and do one thing and that is to kill somebody. I've lived in the same Midwest or Great Lakes state my whole life. This story is actually my earliest memory, and I'm looking for some insight. Sorry for the length, also unsure if this is right flair since I've never posted on Reddit, just scrolling. I was very very young, two to three years old. One day, my mom was baking a cake. I, ran into the kitchen to see the cake being pulled from the oven. I'm not sure if it's relevant, but in my memory of this I'm basically astral projecting. Like, I saw myself run into the kitchen. When I reached the oven, I zoomed back into my body and, being an excited toddler, put my hands the hot oven. After crying and sitting the couch with my hands in a bowl of water, I calm down and start walking down the hallway to my parents' room. The lights are off in the room, and as I'm walking I see something peeking from behind the door. It looked almost like a really messed up version of Dobby from Harry Potter, with huge pointy ears and massive eyes and it was stark white, almost glowing. I was a little scared, but for some reason I said hello to it. It hissed at me and I ran away. Now, I would have ignored all of this if I hadn't had recurring dreams about it for the next decade. A few times a year, I would have this dream and the details would change but I always knew it was going to be this dream because I had this horrible feeling of dread every time but I couldn't wake up. The goblin would disguise itself at either one of my cats or a stuffed animal, and then suddenly transform and strangle me. I would wake up feeling like something had really choked me in real life. The dream stopped after I was 12 to 13, I'm not sure why. I have other normal memories of that house, all that my parents have confirmed, even what show I was watching that day. When I told my mom about all this years later, she dismissed it as my twisted memory of one of our cats, but neither of the cats ever hissed at me without reason and they were very sweet cats. I'm 21 now and still don't know what to think. This happened in the Sierra Nevadas, in Yosemite Valley, California. It was a place that I'd been looking forward to hiking for a long time. I had prepared all my gear the previous night, double-checking everything. Water, food, tent, map, everything. I was just itching to get out there and explore. 
The sun's peeking up over the horizon and it's just so serene. Anyway, a few hours into the hike, I stop to refuel, taking a bit of a breather. I find a nook near a stream. I'm settling down to eat and I hear this sound. First I think it's probably a squirrel or something. But then the sound gets louder and heavier. Suddenly I'm on alert. I'm no stranger to wildlife and I instantly knew that this was different. I can just feel it in my gut. So I decided to move towards it and check it out. I tread lightly trying to figure out the source of the sound and then I see this creature. It's not a bear, not a mountain lion, not anything that you would expect to see in the mountains. It was something different. This creature stood on its hind legs like a human but was much taller. The body was covered in these scales, like a lizard, but these were larger, almost like armor plating. There was also a dark green color, almost black in some places, and its limbs were muscular but lean, like a runner's but way more powerful. The head was the most striking part. It had these slanted almond-shaped eyes that glowed an eerie yellow. It didn't have a snout, more like a flat face. There were these slits where a nose should be and the mouth was filled with sharp jagged teeth, but not like predator's teeth, more like rows of serrated knives, if that makes sense. I didn't see any wings or anything, but it had a long tail, almost as long as the body, like a kangaroo's tail. It had four fingers but they were long and ended in these sharp curved claws. The thing I remember the most was that the creature moved so smoothly, like water flowing over rocks, almost graceful. You're probably thinking I'm pulling your leg or messing with you but I swear this is exactly what I saw. This reptilian-like creature was some next level, out of this world kind of being. I had a good five minutes or so to just stare at the thing. It's standing there at the edge of the clearing just observing me, like it's trying to figure me out. It didn't seem hostile, I mean it was freaky as hell. I didn't want to provoke it. But instead of coming at me it just kind of mirrored me as I moved. It was like we were doing some weird kind of dance. I know it sounds nuts but it was as if the creature was just as curious about me as I was about it. We stood there for what felt like hours but I'm sure it was just a few minutes. At one point I could swear it made a sound like a low hum or something. I couldn't make much of it, but it didn't seem threatening. Then suddenly it turned and disappeared. I was in shock. I mean, what did I just witness? So now, at this point, there I was alone in the clearing with my heart pounding like a drum. I'm just standing there wondering if this really just happened. I was trying to process everything. I decided to follow in the direction where the creature went. I couldn't just let it go and I had to know more. As I moved closer to where it disappeared I noticed these huge tracks on the ground. It was not anything I had ever seen in any guidebook. The air felt different too, almost electric. It felt charged and there was this energy around that I just can't explain. I pushed through the undergrowth following the tracks. It felt like I was in some kind of a dream or a movie like at any moment I would just wake up back in my tent and it would all be over. But no, this was real and it was actually happening. I walked further into the woods. I noticed that the tracks became harder to find, then they started to disappear. It was like the creature had just vanished into thin air. I must have looked around for an hour or more but there was no other sign of it. It was gone but I swear to you that every time I closed my eyes that night I could see those eyes. Its form was burned into my memory. I still can't believe what I saw that day. I had an absolutely bizarre experience at a Texans football game and I just need to share it with you all to see if anyone else has ever encountered anything like this. Last fall I was at NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas when nature called and I headed to the bathroom. Now, here's where it gets weird, I'm at the urinal, and out of the corner of my eye, I spot this guy in a hoodie. But that's not the freaky part. He had this seriously strange nose that was kind of flaring, and he was chewing on his own finger. The guy looked just like a rat. I was so creeped out that I could barely move. He had this intense gaze locked on me and then he put his finger up to his lips like he was telling me to be quiet, and walked away. 
In that moment I felt the most genuine fear I've ever felt, like the kind that sticks with you. No one else was in the bathroom. Has anyone else ever encountered something like this at NRG Stadium? Maybe not exactly at a football game, but just seeing someone or something that made you question reality? It's been bothering me ever since it happened, and I'm hoping I'm not alone in this. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts, and seriously, if anyone else has had a similar experience, please let me know I'm not going crazy here. In June of this year, I went camping for a night with four friends in Bald Eagle State Park in Center County, Pennsylvania. We had reserved a site that was somewhat remote, not near any of the other campsites. After we got there early, we hiked up to the site, set up camp, and then hiked around the area. Later, we made a fire, cooked dinner, and turned in not long afterward. At around 2 a.m., one of my friends and I couldn't sleep, so we trekked up to the main road. When we got to the road we stood near the entrance to our site. As we stood there a black pickup truck with its lights off appeared out of the woods and passed us very slowly. It was unmarked, but not a ranger. After 45 minutes or so, we decided to head back to bed. One of the girls went off into the woods to take care of some things while I climbed back into the tent I shared with her and got into my bag. After a couple of minutes, I heard her moving through the leaves towards the tent coming from my right. At the same time, I also heard the unmistakable rumble of tires on the ground. I stood up and looked out of the little screen window on the tent. It was a perfectly clear night with a very bright moon so I could see everything. I saw my friend come sprinting back to the tent and duck behind it just as the black truck pulled into our campsite, still with its headlights off, and then shut off its engine and sat there. The truck was parked about 50 feet from my tent but I couldn't see a driver or how many people were in there. I just watched it. My friend had ducked down behind our tent and I could hear by her breathing that she was terrified but neither of us said a word. We just kept waiting for something to happen. Eventually, after 10 to 15 minutes, the truck started up again and then backed up down the narrow dirt road. It never turned its headlights on. I heard it drive back in the direction it had originally come from. My friend burst into the tent a second later. She was freaked out and wondered who was in the truck. After a frantic conversation, we went laid down, but we couldn't relax enough to fall asleep. In the morning, we all packed up and headed out, as we had planned. We checked with the park and they do not own any black unmarked trucks, nor did any ranger come to check on our site during the night. The reason I'm writing to you about this is that I know that you have received several Bigfoot reports from Bald Eagle State Park. I was just wondering if you had heard or read of other strange human activity at the location. My other two friends, strangely, never noticed or heard the truck. The entire incident didn't seem right and it has bothered me since. I was doing a delivery for work about an hour ago from typing this. The delivery was in Grove City, Pennsylvania, and the unloading area was right off of the one road in this particular part of town. As the guy started unloading my truck with his forklift, a couple other guys came out just to chat. The guy on the forklift points to the road and asks if he see what he's seeing. After I told him no and looked at the road, I saw it. There was a tall, broad man wearing a fluorescent yellow jumpsuit that resembled a hazmat suit. It was the same shade of yellow as the stereotypical selection of rain jackets or rain boots. Keep in mind, that it's hot and sunny outside today. He was wearing black boots, bulky black gloves that looked like ones you'd wear in snowy weather, and one of those N95 type face masks. All of his skin was covered except for his eyes. This alone was strange, but his behavior was also very off. He was walking in a very exaggerated manner, it almost looked like he was dance walking. He stopped when a kid about 10 years old happened to ride by on his bike. He stopped the kid and started talking to him. One of the guys helping unload my truck loudly told us to check if he knows that kid. After that, the man and the boy go in opposite directions. The man then stops, looks at me, 
and waves. It was hard to tell, but it looked like his eyes were squinted as if he was smiling a really big smile under his mask. I didn't wave back and just kept watching him. He walked by the guard shack in front of the unloading zone, which blocked my view of him, and then he was gone with no trace. The road was open with no surrounding woods or intersecting roads nearby. It would have been extremely obvious if he came out from around the shack. I walked around to find him, and even looked again as I was driving away, but it was like he was never there. What could this have been? Was it some creep or criminal? Was this something paranormal like the grinning man, an extraterrestrial, or maybe interdimensional being? It wasn't just mind tricks because at least five people total all saw the same thing. This story is from the time when me and my boyfriend started dating. We are both into supernatural things, weird things, creepy things. It was December 2021. We are from a city in Romania called Bodosani. Usually when we were hanging out we were driving for hours sometimes parking and just watching videos. In this particular night we decided to go to a village 20 minute as away, man dressed. It was around 12 am, we usually were hanging out only at night because of the work and school. We planned to park in a field, put a blanket in the trunk and stay there watching the city lights. We have been there before and we felt some things like being watched but decided that we were paranoid and didn't think much after. We did the same with the other things we saw on our dates. Anyway, we arrived at the field, parked the car with the trunk facing the field and the dashboard facing the exit. We got out and put the blanket in the trunk. I want to mention that I get scared and spooked easily, I always feel scared in places that I don't know very well. I started to feel like something is wrong and we shouldn't be there but I ignored the felling and proceed to sit in the trunk. As I looked to the lights of the city I started to also make a human figure out of the dark field. I called my boyfriend to come closer and look. He didn't see it at first, it was when I got really scared and starting to get in the car that he saw it. He got scared too and got in the car quickly telling me that the figure was coming towards us. I can t remember if we left immediately or not, but I think we did, I can t remember because we returned to that field many times since. The figure that we saw was a tall black. Fog-like figure. When I say tall I mean like a man and a half tall. We didn't t see it since and there is one detail that I can t remember for sure one because of the panic and two because we had many situations like this one. Not only encounters but also just moments when we felt like we were stalked, we felt like we shouldn't TB in certain places. And before anyone says that we really shouldn't TB in certain places, we know that and most of our stories happened in really random places. When we go to more sacred places we are respectful and take precautions. Anyway, I can T remember if one of us saw or felt like this figure was watching us and when I say watching I mean like it had glowing eyes. However it might have been only our imagination or the city lights that gave us the impression of eyes. Also it was not a man because if it was he would have come to the car and tell us to leave or bang in the windows until we left. My boyfriend just told me one thing that happened the same night and for some reason I was thinking it happened another time. So we left the field and as soon as we got on the road we noticed a spot on the road. I parked the car, my boyfriend got out first and looked. He said it was blood but I didn't t believe him so I got out to see for myself. It was blood. The thing is that it looked as it have fallen from above if it makes sense. The road that we were on has trees on one side and the other but not on this exact spot because there was the entrance to the field. Also it couldn't t have been a car that killed some animal that was crossing the road because there was no animal and no cars have passed since we arrived. No lights. No engine sounds, nothing. What do you think it was? Has anyone had similar encounters? And should I post the rest of the stories? Hopefully get some clarity on it. Especially with all this alien talk happening right now. Hopefully this is the right place to post about it. It happened when I was in high school, either 2015 or 2016 of May 6th. 
my best friend at the time, our two guy friends, and I went to a small concert and decided to go to a residential park after to chill or smoke a little weed. This was in Huntington Beach, California in a pretty wealthy suburban residential area. We sat at a bench and were just hanging out and chatting like normal teenagers, no alcohol or heavy drugs or psychedelics were involved at all. It was a pretty large park, there was a soccer field right in front of us, and behind it was a hill that led to a residential neighborhood on top, this part is really important later. Since there were no lights behind the soccer field, the hill was really dark and hard to see. All of a sudden, we saw four orange lights trailing back and forth in an S shape down the hill. And there was a this sound that resembled almost like a dinosaur or animalistic snarl or something. We assumed it was the cops, so we started to stand up and back away from the benches towards our car. We were stalling to see what was coming towards us. As they came into the lights of the soccer field, we saw about five or six people in black hooded cloaks walking side by side in unison. They were also playing some eerie music from a stereo or something. All of them formed a circle, and one of them came into the middle of the circle, took off his cloak, was naked, and started hitting and slapping his chest really hard. I remember him being bald, very pale, and hitting his chest so hard that it was leaving pink marks on his skin. Then he blew a horn of some sort which made that sound that resembled an animal's snarl. Then all of them turned around looking at us in unison, and started sprinting towards us. I started to run but for some reason my friends weren't really running at all. Then they started getting really close, and then we all panicked and ran into our cars. Once we were in our cars, they all had lined up on the sidewalk looking towards our cars, then turned around in unison and walked away down into the park. My friends and I parked our cars facing each other and called each other on the phone to talk about what happened. We assumed it was some kids from HB High School which they nicknamed Heroin High because there are very interesting characters that attend that high school. We ended up just staying in the car for a couple hours talking and trying to process that whole situation. Two hours passed and it may have been 1 or 2 am. Out of nowhere, some sort of giant aircraft came out of nowhere and it was flying above the neighborhood over the top of the hill. It looked like what a UFO would look like. I had never seen anything like it before. All of us were in shock. I looked over to our friends in the other car, and all our jaws were dropped and we did not say a word to each other. It wasn't one of those moments where someone sees a UFO hundreds of miles away in the sky for a couple seconds then it just disappears. This UFO was just hovering above this neighborhood for at least a minute or two. Long enough and close enough for me to roll down my window and stick my head out to study it. I remember the noise of the machinery too. I remember seeing three red lights and three blue lights, spinning in circles as it was hovering. I remember trying to study the whole aircraft and try to remember all the details. Then it descended down into the neighborhood and just disappeared. And I emphasize, this was a suburban neighborhood in Huntington Beach. There's no landing pad, there's no airport, there's just nothing that would allow any planes or aircrafts to land or take off. It just descended and disappeared. And we waited until 4 am to see if anything would happen after, but nothing did. We just went home after and went to sleep. The next day, I did some research and from what I can remember May 6th was Walpurgis Day, which is day? I tried to see if there were UFO sightings and I remember seeing an article of someone reporting a UFO in Singapore or somewhere in Asia, with similar red and blue lights. Could these two things somehow be correlated? I recently reconnected with my friend, and we got to chat about it years after it happened and our stories are still the same. I ran into one of the guys a few years ago at in and out Burgers. I literally just called his name, we made eye contact and I said do you remember me? He said yes then said my name. And all I said to him afterwards was, that day. That was real right? I'm not crazy? And he immediate replied, that shit was real. We exchanged smiles, he grabbed his food, and left. Could anyone provide any clarity on this? It happened so long ago and kind of just suppressed the memory. But it was very much real and finally searching for answers.
Let me know. Thanks so much. No idea but I'm freaked out. So to start I know a decent amount about things like this and I have a general idea of what they can look and act like. So today I wake up and it's only just become 4 am so I headed downstairs to get a water and smoke a cigarette on my back patio. Typically my grandmother's dogs do not follow me or even really pay attention to me at all but tonight as I'm on my back patio both of them follow me outside and then they freeze in their tracks. There is a corner between the garage door and the fence of my backyard and my bedroom window is just over the garage door about 14 feet off the ground I'd say. So my dogs are frozen in place and just staring hard at this corner and then I begin to get that sinking feeling in my stomach that I'm being watched. My dogs have not moved from staring at this corner and I've only been outside for around 5 minutes at this point so I start staring at this corner too. There is a tree right up against this fence in this corner and I am very familiar with how it looks at night but tonight it looked off. I can kind of make out what looks like a person's head where their eyes would be just level with my window. The second I notice this my dogs absolutely lose their shit barking at what I thought was nothing and these are dogs that typically don't bark, not even for neighbors or postmen. At this point I can clearly see that something is standing in this corner looking into my window or at me. I went inside and brought my dogs with me and made sure to shut the door and draw the blinds completely over it and they have not stopped barking. I go upstairs and pretend that I heard and saw nothing but as I look at my window I can see the top of the head I mentioned earlier just at the corner of my window where typically there is nothing because of how high off the ground it is. It's too dark for me to clearly capture something on camera but I am very sure of what I saw. I live in Texas at the edge of an urban area that they have only started expanding. On to in the last 10 years. From the front of my house it used to be miles of apple orchards and fields and for the most part it still is fields but now they've started building houses here. I find this strange only because it's such an urban area but I know there's no 14 foot people walking around peering into windows. I can't say for sure what it could be or was I only know what I saw. I've had previous experiences with things like this when I lived out in Oregon and rural Ohio as a kid, and only once or twice living in a semi-wooded areas in the panhandle of Florida. If anyone has any ideas or speculations on this I would love to hear it but for now I'm going to pretend this didn't happen.